On the screen are videos from the ADA book, but right now we're going to look at snippets from videos posted by different channels. And the reason we're going to do this is after I published my most recent Shopify ADA compliance videos, I started to watch other videos on Shopify ADA compliance. And in these videos, um, the information is bad. Um, sometimes it's wrong, sometimes it's misleading, uh, but this contributes to why it's so difficult for, in this instance, Shopify owners to understand exactly uh, what they need to do and prioritize to make their websites accessible and prevent lawsuits. Because when people ask about ADA compliance, what they're almost always asking about is how do I not be sued? How do I prevent a lawsuit? So we're going to talk about, I'm going to play the clips and, and each of the snippets is only um, at most a minute long, but we're going to play three different clips and I'm going to add commentary and just explain uh, what is wrong or what is misleading. So for this first video, it is titled, How to Make Your Shopify Store ADA Compliant. This is by the channel Bit Branding, and we're going to start at two minutes and nine seconds and I'll play it now about your site's accessibility pain points. What is it exactly that you need to fix? So here are some good tasks to start with. Number one, make sure that you have alt text on all of your images. And I mean all of your images. Make sure that... All right, so we'll stop it there with the alt text. Uh, he emphasizes all of your images, but it's not all of your images because you're only going to add alternative text descriptions for those images that are meaningful. Uh, for any images that are decorative, we're going to add an alt attribute, but we're going to leave that alt attribute empty. And then I'll go ahead and play it again. All forms of PDFs are compliant. A... Okay, so he said all forms of PDFs are compliant. Um, this is just a strange inclusion at number two on uh, what is uh, presumably an ADA compliance list. Uh, first of all, that's, you know, PDFs are a consideration, yes, but they are a very distant consideration. There are literally dozens of things that I would prioritize above PDFs. And most Shopify websites, um, PDFs aren't at issue. So it was just, a, it was a strange inclusion on that statement to your website or the bottom, just as you have a, pr a privacy policy, you have terms of service, you can have an accessibility policy where you're talking about your goal of becoming ADA compliant. Be transparent. Talk about how you are working towards getting ADA compliant while you actually do work on that. Another thing is... Okay, so here he's talking about an accessibility statement, and then he later refers to it as an accessibility policy. So there is a difference here. But for the purposes of this video, most people understand what he's talking about to be an accessibility statement. Uh, but then he talks about transparency. Well, you know, depending on what your what stage you're in, I, it's, you don't want to announce accessibility issues in general, especially as a small business, uh, because practically this could lead to a lawsuit. So, you know, an accessibility statement isn't overly complicated, uh, but you do want to make sure that you are considering your status, um, potentially even um, discussing this with a defense attorney, because it does have legal legal implications. So, it's not something that I would take on flippantly. Um, it's not overly complicated, but at the same time, you want to get it right to place an accessibility app. We actually really like and enjoy using Accessibility. This is a powerful Shopify accessibility solution that automates key accessibility requirements. You can check out the link in the description for it. Okay, and so here he's talking about using an app from the App Store. In this case, the app is Accessibility. Um, as I've gone over numerous times, uh, you know, an, an accessibility widget, and in this case, the, the, the term widget is being wrapped in app because with the, with the Shopify uh, websites, you're uh, installing apps, but anyways, um, with accessibility widgets, they don't make your website accessible. They don't make your website ADA compliant. And it's been shown time and again, literally hundreds of websites with accessibility widgets have been sued despite the accessibility widget being there. Um, so it's really important to know that these things don't work. And, you know, this video was published two years ago. So, uh, I mean, that wasn't that long ago, but it, uh, you know, just giving some leeway here for the fact that, you know, at, at this time, you know, maybe it was less known about accessibility widgets. But yeah, it doesn't matter on the widget. It doesn't matter on the app. It doesn't matter what it is. It's, it, you know, some plaintiff's law firms actually target websites with an uh, accessibility widget. So, you know, just keeping that in mind, don't use a widget. Don't use a um, uh, an accessibility app. It's not it's not what, uh, you know, you think it is. It's like a lot of people use them because they think they're going to stop a lawsuit and make their website ADA compliant. That is not the case. And so, you know, part of the reason I'm covering this is, you know, this video uh, for, from Bit Branding has 1.6 thousand views from two years ago, 47 likes, and Bit Branding currently has 36,300 subscribers. So that's a large reach. It's a large audience. You know, people are hearing this information and and they're taking it, but you have to be really careful because you have a large audience. Uh, you know, even if you didn't have a large audience, you have to be careful. People are relying upon this advice, um, and this is a very litigious uh, landscape. So you know, if people get the wrong advice, they can easily get sued. All right, so we're going to continue on with another video. This is from Jody Edgar, the Shopify expert. And the title of this video is Shopify Accessibility Score and ADA Compliance. So we're going to play it at four minutes, 52 seconds in. 
you know, for this, we're really going to be looking at the accessibility. And when I talk about accessibility and ADA, they're interchangeable. All right. Okay. So they're interchangeable for him, accessibility and ADA compliance. Uh, but when you're thinking about accessibility and ADA compliance, I would keep the two terms isolated, um, even if you conflate the two, um, just because they can mean different things. And especially, um, you know, accessibility and ADA compliance, it's just, you know, we have something here where we have the law and then we have, you know, these different technical standards. Typically, when we talk about accessibility, we're talking about the web content accessibility guidelines. Even when they're incorporated into the law, they're not uh, actually the law. Um, so they may be required under the law, but they're not the law. But um, even more than that, when we're talking about ADA compliance, again, this goes back to many people are asking, how do I not get sued? How do, how do I reduce my risk of being sued? And so for this reason, you know, we're not going to look strictly at accessibility in terms of the web content accessibility guidelines, or as is about to be showcased here, the Google Lighthouse. We're going to look at practically how do we prevent a lawsuit? And we do this through certain accessibility issues, but it's not accessibility as a whole. We need to be more specific than that. Um, and really, you know, one of the things that I harp on is making sure that your terminology is aligned with what is actual reality, because when we use different terms interchangeably, it creates misalignment and it ultimately creates confusion. Now, sometimes the interchanging of terms is harmless. So sometimes, like, let's just take conformance and compliance. Usually when compliance is used incorrectly, uh, it doesn't really, there's not really a difference. Um, but when you start talking about ADA compliance and accessibility, um, it can create confusion under certain contexts. So just note that. So we're going to go and generate out the report. And actually, I'm going to skip ahead to 530 because that's what is relevant for this snippet at what the accessibility came back with. So as we can see here, when we're running the theme on accessibility, we've got an 89. Now that's pretty good, um, but I think we can get this thing up to uh, 100. So if we click on accessibility, it's gonna jump down to the, the list of items that it has flagged as things that are not accessibly compliant. Now I wanna talk about one thing quickly here. Using the Google Inspector Lighthouse tool is kind of like using a metal detector. Okay, so he goes on with this metal detector analogy, but this gets uh, to the broader point here is that uh, when it comes to Shopify, um, I've seen more than just the videos um, on that I'm talking about now referring to Google Lighthouse. And in some cases, there is this idea that a Google Lighthouse score of 100 is equivalent to ADA compliance, which it is not. Google Lighthouse is a nice start, but that's all it is. It's just a nice start. There's so much more to accessibility. And, um, and very importantly for Shopify store owners, there's so much more to preventing lawsuits. Um, so when we talk about ADA compliance and the practical aspects of not getting sued, Google Lighthouse is not an endpoint. Just because you receive a 100 score on Google Lighthouse, um, it's nice, but it doesn't mean not much. So keep that in mind because we always want to have our scan errors down to zero, uh, but we never want to stop at a scan. There's so much more. And what we see in lawsuits is that there is much more than, it, than can be flagged by automation that is claimed in lawsuits. So it's important not to stop there, but I think what happens is a lot is because Shopify has certain scores as their developer requirements for to get a theme in the theme store that Google Lighthouse has become connected to ADA compliance when it's really just something like like it's one of many scans that you can use um, to to learn and to learn about uh, some issues that exist on your website, uh, but it's not conclusive. It's never where you would stop. So just keep that in mind. Now, one other note on this video is it's 14 minutes and six seconds long, and I'm not going to play this other clip, but uh, I think it's, he, he talks about color contrast for over three minutes and 30 seconds, which, you know, for um, when it comes to an, a video on Shopify ADA compliance, that's really focusing in on something very simple, but it's just, you know, color contrast is something that's just one of many considerations, and it's definitely not the top accessibility issue that you need to focus in on. So you need to prioritize. Color contrast is nothing I would prioritize. Yes, it's important, but there are other accessibility issues um, that are more likely, much more likely to lead to a lawsuit. Not that I haven't seen color contrast come up, but it comes up rarely. Uh, and there are other issues that can result in an outright barrier to access. So we're going to continue on and we're going to go to another video. And by the way, I think I covered this last video, but Joey Edgar, the Shopify expert has 9.87 thousand subscribers. So 9,870 subscribers. The video is from 2021. It's got 1,110 review, uh, 10 views. And now we're going to look at uh, a video that was posted a year ago from Hulk Apps, and we're going to go ahead and play the video. How to check if your website is ADA compliant. Open the website that you want to test. Click on the inspect elements and then go to the lighthouse section. There are a number of different reports that you can generate from here, but in this case, you're looking to generate the accessibility report. After that, you will get an accessibility score along with recommendations on what you can do in order to improve your website's accessibility. The numbers on the lighthouse test are not percentages. It is a rough score out of 100 that gives you an idea of whether your website is heading in the right direction. Everything over a score of 90 is considered to be great, but of course, you should aim to get 100. What if your website isn't ADA compliant? Okay, so again, we're back to Lighthouse. Um, 
and and just this this connect this magnetism toward Google Lighthouse. It's not like Google Lighthouse is bad. Like you want a hundred score on Google Lighthouse, but it's never something I would key in on. It's never something I would focus in on. I would focus in on certain accessibility issues that are most likely to lead to a lawsuit. I'd prioritize those, and then I'd work towards full WCAG 2.1 AA conformance. So, um, and whole caps has 329 subscribers, not as large of reach, but this video does have 377 views. And I had seen these videos come up before, but I never actually watched them until um, I had a video start audio playing. And then I, I was like, I listened to one video and then I was like, well, let me see what uh, these other videos say. And so these are all some of the top videos on Shopify ADA compliance. And you know whether or not they specifically say that it ends at Google Lighthouse, that's the impression that you get from watching the video is that it, you know these last two videos we did see, they're, they're, they're specifically focusing in on that 100 score on Google Lighthouse. This gets back to why I'm so skeptical when marketing agencies decide to enter in to uh, accessibility and ADA compliance is just because they don't have the they're not they don't have the attention to detail. They haven't uh, fully researched this space to really inform clients. But the point is, is they're not in this space, and you can tell by watching the videos they don't fully understand the space. Uh, when it comes to full alignment, again, the website owner cares about not being sued, and the um, you know to do that you have to pay close attention to what is actually causing people to get sued. That is the whole reason I created the ADA compliance course is because it provides you a like a step by step instruction, uh, step by step instructions on exactly what you need to uh, focus in on and what issues you need to find and fix, and then how to think about accessibility strategically so that you're lowering your risk of being sued as you are improving the accessibility of your website. Um, so I will include a link to the ADA compliance course along with a link to accessible.org services um, if you are interested in an audit and or remediation. I will include links to those resources in the description.